Well, happy Friday, everybody. Maybe if you haven't started yet, you'll use this weekend to get that Christmas shopping going. But I also hope you're going to make time this weekend to be part of our Sunday worship services. If you don't have your own church, we'd love to have you at E-Free. Uh, we have services at our Gaylor campus at 9 o'clock and 1030. At our Sault Ste. Marie campus, one service at 1030. But you can also, from wherever you are, be part of Church Online, live from our Gaylor campus at 9 o'clock and 1030. Just go to our website, myefree.org, then click on Watch Live. We'd love to have you join us this Sunday. Well, we're talking about Christmas, the day God shouted. Christmas is the revelation of God's glory. We already saw that in creation he whispered his glory and the Old Testament he spoke his glory, but on Christmas he shouted his glory. Now we're looking at Hebrews chapter 1. We've looked at verses 2 and 3. I want to reread those, but I want to add verse number 4. Listen. In these last days God has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he, Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his nature. And he upholds all things by the word of his power. And when he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. And we know that that's a name that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now we already saw the timing of the revelation of God's glory. It happened in the last days. The last day started at the first coming of Jesus, Christmas. It continues until the second coming of Jesus. We saw the totality of it. Through Jesus, we saw an exact representation of the glory of God. But now let's notice just a few more points regarding the truth of this. And I see five truths. Number one, we see the inheritance of Jesus. He is appointed heir of all things. It all belongs to him. We see his initiation. It says in this passage, he's the one who made the world. Jesus is the one who spoke the world into existence. <clears throat> we also see his influence. It says he upholds all things by his power. What keeps the world spinning? What keeps uh, the planets from, from staying in space and, and from not just falling to the earth? What keeps the oceans from just overtaking the land? It's because Jesus, through the very word of his power, keeps the whole thing going. He didn't just with his word create it. With his word, he sustains it. He controls it. So we see his inheritance, his initiation, his influence. We see his intervention. It says he made purification of sins. And that's the whole reason God revealed his glory at Christmas. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And how did he do that? By dying on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin in full and rising from the dead. And then we also see his installation. It says that when all that was done, he sat down at the right hand of God. He ascended back into heaven. He sat at the right hand of God where he intercedes for us as believers today. All of that is part of Christmas. The day God shouted. The day God revealed his glory. But here's the key question. What does that mean to us? What does the glory of God produce in our lives? Well, you have to wait a couple days but we're going to answer that question Monday morning when we start a new week of morning check-ins. Have a great weekend, everybody.